the only Russian stealth bomber that almost tricked the USAF. The attacks have always been at the top of the news when it comes to any war happening between our countries, and it's all about international relations between one country to the other. So hey, welcome back to Vehicle Radar. Today, we got you the story of how this Russian bomber almost tricked the USAF. Well, you might not believe it, but it's all true, and we'll get to know more about the story. So let's get started. First, let's get to know a bit about the machine. The Maya Shishev M4, often known as the Bison due to its designation by NATO, was a Soviet long-range bomber. It was the first jet bomber in the Soviet Union's strategic air force that was capable of reaching deep into the United States continental territory. The Maya Shishev Design Studio, led by Vladimir Mikhailovich Maya Shishev, who lived from 1902 to 1978, was responsible for its production. The initial version of the system was put into use in 1956. It was powered by four turbojet engines, and it had a peak speed and level flight of around 900 kilometers or 550 miles per hour, an operational ceiling that was higher than 12,500 meters or about 40,000 feet, and a combat range that could reach up to 15,000 kilometers with in-flight refueling, that being about 9,000 miles. The M4 had a powerful defensive armament consisting of 23mm guns housed in three turrets, and it had a crew of eight people operating it. Its primary offensive load consisted of two nuclear bombs, although it was also capable of carrying up to 28 conventional bombs weighing up to 1,100 pounds each. The M4 series had a troubled manufacturing history and was swiftly replaced as the primary Soviet long-range bomber by the Tupolev Tu-95. This is because the Tupolev Tu-95 was more reliable. The factory closed its doors for good in the early 1960s. The majority of aircraft were repurposed to have the capabilities of reconnaissance, refueling, and transport throughout the 1980s, although a select few continue to be used as bombers. It's safe to say that the most interesting phase in the history of military aviation was during the Cold War. Both the West and the Soviet Union were keen to learn what the other was up to, and as a result, they worked very hard to produce aircraft that were superior to those on the other side. However, the beginning of the Cold War was maybe the most interesting period since jet aircraft were going through rapid phases of development at this time, and both sides were attempting to gain as much of an advantage over the other as they possibly could. It was speculated that one of these planes was responsible for the unintentional beginning of a weapons race between the United States and the Soviet Union. The United States came to this conclusion after observing a footage of a huge number of these aircraft flying in formation. The Maya Shishev M4 was the name of that airplane. Alongside the Tupolev Tu-16 Badger, the M4 would go on to become one of the earliest examples of a Soviet strategic bomber to make use of jet propulsion. As we are about to see, the M4 was an airplane that never quite lived up to the promise that its design held for it. However, this did not prevent it from pressuring the United States to develop its strategic bomber force. Beginnings and the Development of the M4 Weapon System Almost immediately after the conclusion of the Second World War, work on the creation of the M4 began. This work was carried out by the United States Army. The Soviet Union concluded that it should give top priority to the research and development of a strategic bomber that was capable of carrying nuclear bombs and had a long range of flight. It possessed a fleet of Tupolev Tu-4s at the time, which were essentially Boeing B-29 Superfortress bombers that had been modified through the process of reverse engineering. Because it lacked the range essential to strike at the heart of the United States, and because the Korean War had proven that piston engine bombers were particularly prone to be intercepted by jet fighters, the Tu-4 was swiftly becoming obsolete. As a direct consequence of this, an entirely new airplane was urgently required. During that period, the aviation company known as Maya Shishev was tasked with the responsibility of developing a brand new strategic bomber for the Soviet Union that was also capable of delivering nuclear weapons. The M4 was an airplane that had a design that was extremely typical for the time, and the day that it had its first flight was January 20th, 1953. It would soon begin its state acceptance testing. But the actual testing wouldn't start until March 1954. The aircraft was initially put into service with the Soviet Air Force in 1955 and was given the NATO reporting name Bison at that time. Following its initial success, the Myshishev company went on to produce a total of 34 units of the bomber, which included the aircraft's first two prototypes. The Soviet Union had just recently come into possession of a strategic bomber with an extended range. Shocking the United States of America. On May Day in 1954, 
the bison was introduced to the rest of the world for the very first time at Red Square, and it caught the United States by surprise, since they were unaware that the Soviet Union possessed a jet bomber. However, the United States quickly realized that the bison did not have the range to strike the United States, similarly to the 2-4. Therefore, the Myshushev business developed the 3M, often known as the Bison B, in the West. This new model had its first voyage in 1955 and included some more power, as well as a greater overall range. On the other hand, when they witnessed 28 bisons flying at a Soviet air show, the United States once again became concerned. This sparked concerns that the bison was being manufactured in large quantities, even though the United States was unaware that the same group of 10 aircraft had flown through the cameras again to inflate the numbers of the jet. Because of this, the United States began to worry about the possibility of a bomber gap, and as a result, Boeing was given the unexpected responsibility of mass-producing the B-47 Stratajet, as well as the newer and more capable B-52 Stratofortress, to close the gap and regain the advantage that had been lost to the Soviet Union. However, the reality was that the Soviet Union did not have a very big number of aircraft, and the bison was not performing as well as had been expected. This was a problem. In addition to the challenges that it presents, the bison had a crew of eight people, and the M4 was outfitted with four Mikulin AM3A turbojets. These engines allowed the bomber to reach a height speed of 588 miles per hour and had a maximum range of 3,500 miles. The bomber featured a fairly traditional design with swept wings, but it was a substantial upgrade over the back-converted B-29s that the Soviet Union possessed. This improvement was by far and away the most noticeable. However, it turned out that the Bison's engines were not very effective, and as a result, the aircraft was unable to fly to the United States. As a consequence of this, it was unable to perform the duties associated with its role as a nuclear bomber, rendering it ineffective. There were only 19 Bisons in all that served in some capacity related to the nuclear warning system. The Bison have completed their journey and have arrived at their destination. The Bison was mainly developed for long-range maritime surveillance and strike operations. Nevertheless, the bulk of these aircraft was rapidly converted into tankers throughout the 1970s and 80s. These conversions occurred mostly in the United States. The Tupolev Tu-22M would immediately assume responsibility for the maritime operations as soon as it was able to do so. Tanker variants of the Bison aircraft continue to fly into the year 1994, much to everyone's astonishment. After the end of the Cold War, various weapons limitation agreements led to the destruction of the bulk of decommissioned Bison to extract the metals they contained. However, there are at least four examples of the aircraft that have been preserved up until the present day. Of these, there are now two on display at museums across the world. Even though the Myshishev M4 Bison may have unintentionally touched off an arms race, there was no reason for the United States of America to feel threatened by this weapon. And that'll be all for today's video, folks, and we'll be right back with more amazing content. If you liked today's video, please make sure you hit that like button so that we know that you enjoyed our video, and it motivates us to make more informative videos for you. Also, if you would, please press that bell icon and make sure you subscribe to our channel so you get more content like this. Hey, thanks for watching today's video, and we'll see you in the next one.